it is incumbent upon them in their responsibility to walk in harm's way and to open up doors. No was not an option. Failure was not an option. And I think in many ways is that what's helped my father to launch Black Enterprise. It's an awesome platform to say, okay, hey, here's what's valuable today, and here's what's going to be valuable tomorrow. Embrace non-traditional areas. People are going to have to get comfortable being uncomfortable and playing in those spaces. If no one knows who you are or what you're doing, then no one knows where you can go and what you can do. Everybody has this fear sometimes of uncertainty, and that's what I think we have to overcome. He didn't know the first thing about being a publisher, didn't know anything about magazines or media per se, but he believed in himself. The audacity to chronicle yourselves in the pantheon of commercial enterprise, that's courage, that's audacity, that's the frontier, that's vision, that's disruption. Seven years after thousands of Americans, black and white, descended upon the Washington Mall to hear the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. implore the government to do right by African American citizens, Earl G. Graves Sr. had a dream of his own. Impacted by three years as an administrative assistant to Senator Robert F. Kennedy. If you were speaking with my father today, he would tell you the single most important work experience he's ever had in his life including black enterprise, including the military, including being in law enforcement, a florist, whatever the things he's done, was the three years or so that he worked for Robert F. Kennedy. Because in that time, he got a chance to see what privilege does. He got a chance to see what influence and power truly was. Nothing is impossible. I'm 10 and I'm watching the 1968 Olympics when African Americans stand up on the medal stand and raise a fist. And so many people could say that was inappropriate. But if you were black at that time and you were going through uh, the, the throes of the civil rights movement, it offered another perspective. It reflected how a lot of people were feeling at the time. In 1970, after the Brooklyn-born Earl Graves had formed his own management consulting firm to advise corporations on urban affairs and economic development, the former Army captain brazenly chose to craft a new narrative for African Americans, show a new path to success, one that preached doing for self and opportunity. As a country, we have to focus on how do we move people out of poverty. That, that is the issue. Think about the political discourse that happens more times than not now. Black enterprise has the opportunity to continue, to sort of lead the way in creating the marketplace as it relates to black businesses. Black enterprise has been at the forefront of my life um, since I was in high school and wanting to be a business major, learning about business titans such as Herman Russell, John H. Johnson, Reginald F. Lewis, Earl Grave Sr. Black Enterprise provided the platform and the medium to show and to highlight these African American executives. My father was an entrepreneur. His company was actually one of the BE 100s on one of the first lists. So I knew about the BE 100 growing up. So I would always follow the magazine and know that anything was possible if I put my mind to it. One day. I'm going to be on the BE 100s. This is a declaration that we at Black Enterprise have heard countless times over the years from entrepreneurs who look to our list of the nation's largest black owned companies as both their standard and inspiration for their lofty entrepreneurial ambitions. As Black Enterprise grew into the premier business investing and wealth building resource for African Americans, Earl Graves saw more. And in 1972, he launched the BE 100s, an annual listing of the largest African-American firms in the country. Again, the listing changed the conversation. It said, 
Look at us. Why not us? There was something called the Fortune 500, or still is today. And probably two years into Black Enterprise starting, someone came to my father with an idea and they said, you know, we should do something similar. But why that's important is because it's trying to measure where we have seen growth in black owned businesses over a sustained period of time. So we've seen tremendous growth within the B100s, both in sheer the number of companies as well as how valuable those companies have become. But for black enterprise, the chronicling of the history of African American excellence in the world of business would not exist. The examples that many of us were fortunate to be able to set because of black enterprise, those examples wouldn't exist. I was fortunate, I grew up in a household where my father put on a suit and tie every day and went to work. So what did I think I was gonna do when I grew up? Put on a suit and tie and go to work. That's what I knew. So we need to make sure, especially from a media perspective, that people are being exposed to and understand the opportunities that are out there for them. While major business publications like Business Week, Fortune, and the Wall Street Journal largely ignored the challenges and triumphs of black professionals, Black Enterprise became that outlet, covering them in full. Advertisers like AT&T that co-signed on BE's vision were faithful and diligent. AT&T has been a client with Black Enterprise since its initial year, since the year that my father launched the magazine. They were a charter advertiser at that point. AT&T has consistently, not just with Black Enterprise, but in Black media, in multicultural media, gone after and been not supportive like, oh, I'm giving back, but invested in, which is what I would prefer to say, AT&T has invested in this market. There are very few things we do at AT&T on a small basis, right? We operate at scale. And so oftentimes there are needs, but when we face off to one of our diverse suppliers, they may not be able to meet it because they can't operate at the scale at which we need. But if I can talk two or three of these smaller businesses and help them understand that if they combine forces, now all of a sudden you're operating at a scale at which now you're attractive to AT&T. We can do business. Everybody wins in that. Black Enterprise Magazine through all its platforms whether it's print, online, digital, social media, provides not only just the African-American community, but everybody with awareness of who is succeeding, what industries they are succeeding, and how they are succeeding. As Black Enterprise grew, its influence as a media platform also expanded. There was a seminal moment in the magazine where a young Ray McGuire was quoted. McGuire's words and bravado brought Earl Graves' vision full circle. Uh, I interviewed, got through the first round, and they invited me to the Rich Carlton under what I now know as a pretense of a cocktail party. So I get into the, the small vestibule, and the room emptied, exception of one senior person at First Boston. And he took his chair, and he put the back of his chair towards me, and he straddled the chair, and he said, uh, you got five minutes shoot your best shot. I'm thinking, wait a minute. I know nothing about this business. It's a summer associate job, and this guy's up in my grill. I, I got nothing to lose. So my response to him was Harvard College, Harvard Business School, and Harvard Law School pride themselves on taking the cream of the crop. I, Ray McGuire, pride myself on being the film off the top of the cream. His response then was, okay, we have, I don't know, 450 people, half the business school class interviewing for two summer associate positions. Why you? And my response was, in the heat of battle, it is better to have me on your side than against you, because I'll find a way to win. Black Enterprise has carried the baton for black professionals for almost five decades pivoting to events like its annual Black Enterprise Women of Power Summit, shining a light on entrepreneurial women who are changing the game. I can tell within 15 minutes whether the person is capable or not. 
not technically necessarily, but as a manager. And it is, it is amazing to me that to this day I give them time. Well, maybe we can change them, maybe we can improve them. And its latest venture, Black Men Excel. Born out of necessity, Earl Gray Sr., himself a father of three sons, understood that black men, black boys, are at a crisis point in America. Black men excel. Just take the first three words. Positive image. Black men excel. Black men excel. And the purpose of it is to be able to say, with all the negative narrative that there is that surround black men, on a daily basis, there has to be some narrative where we take a moment to say, you know what? We are pretty damn good. Black enterprise is still necessary and needed. In many ways, 2017 America isn't far removed from 1970 America. Media and social media has given us a voice, but African Americans are still severely underrepresented in corporate America. This is why Butch Graves Jr. says, black enterprise has to remain unapologetically black, telling our stories, calling out industries, being that audacious change agent. Black enterprise needs to become that Bible type of media guy for African-Americans in corporate, African-Americans who are entrepreneurs, African-Americans that are in all the different areas that we can strive in. So, I mean, it has always been that form from a business standpoint. I think there's a generation that might not have embraced it or known about it. So we got to get back to our roots and push that even more. So there has to be intentional focus on, on people who are living in poverty. And the poverty and the impacts of poverty disproportionately affects the black community, disproportionately affects black men. So that is one of the best things we can do. That doesn't mean that's the only thing we do. There are a number of things we should be focused on when we're addressing black men and their plight in this country. Sometimes I believe when we get to a certain level of success, we might forget either what we went through who laid the path ahead of us to be here. This uh, magazine's publication does an amazing job of tying it all together, of, of connecting it. To this day, there isn't a black enterprise issue that I don't get my hands on and make sure I know what's going on. So, I mean, that's something I grew up with. We have to make sure that the next generation understands that also. The story that black enterprise tells, which is as relevant today and will be relevant tomorrow, as it was yesterday, is a story of excellence. It's a story of educational excellence. It's a story of excellence in entertainment. It's a story of excellence in athletics. It's a story of excellence in the financial services industry. It's purely and simply a story of excellence. So anyone who gets confused by that story or who doesn't celebrate that story is gonna be put on what I call the service road. And once you're on the service road, it's very difficult to get back on the main road. And Black Enterprise gives us a road map it is the link, if you will, in today's vernacular, the excellence and the standards to which we should all aspire. Black Enterprise is a link to courage. Just think about the vision that that man had to have. 1970 to say, I'm gonna go chronicle the best in class that happened to be black. So any young person listening today, any young person listening today should recognize that. What do you use to fuss when the landlord dissed us, no heat? Birthdays were the worst days. Now we're doing what? Sipping champagne like we're Thursday? That's Black Enterprise. We have to be bolder about things that are not necessarily going to be easy. And that's why I go back to how we felt coming out of the Civil Rights Movement. We didn't have to have people who had laid the ground or who had done these various things. We just had to have the belief that we could do certain things. And if you have a good support system that's behind you, then you have a greater chance of being able to achieve those things. Audacity, intrepid boldness, bold or arrogant disregard for normal restraints, defying convention, stepping in harm's way. The single most important quote that my father gave the three of us is be willing to walk in harm's way. 
and he would measure people he would talk to by seeing what's the courage of their conviction. And so I think it's incumbent upon African Americans who've had some success, made a success of themselves, whether in corporate America or entrepreneurs, or as entrepreneurs, it is incumbent upon them in their responsibility to walk in harm's way and to open up doors.